For the entire lifespan of this YouTube channel, the Red Wings have been consistently year in and year out one of the NHL's worst teams. Up until this point, I've never really been able to make a positive video on the Red Wings on ice performance. Obviously, throughout the rebuild, there has been positives, free agent signings, trades, prospects panning out, that kind of thing. But for the most part, the on ice product throughout my YouTube career has not really been worth talking about. That is until now, in light of the Red Wings' recent hot streak they have put themselves right in the thick of the Eastern Conference wildcard race, which is crazy considering that even just before the All-Star break, sure the Red Wings were still hanging around 500, but at least in my eyes, they weren't a legit threat to actually push for one of those playoff spots. I was of the mindset that the Red Wings should probably look to sell off a bunch of players at the trade deadline, do what they can to give themselves the best opportunity to possibly enter the Connor Bedard sweepstakes, which would mean they'd have to finish in one of the bottom 11 spots in the league. It's really crazy how much can change in such a short period of time, but I thought now would be the perfect time to make a video on the Red Wings and the season that they've had up until this point, give my thoughts on the current state of the team and if I think they can actually pull this off. So first things first, let's take a look at the current state of the Eastern Conference wildcard race after the Red Wings win over the Capitals last night. Detroit currently has 62 points in 56 games, which puts them just two points back of the Florida Panthers for that second wildcard spot, but they have four games in hand. If you were to sort things based off of points percentage, the Penguins and the Red Wings would actually be the teams holding those wildcard spots, but I don't really like to do that because yes, obviously the games in hand matter, but they don't if you don't take advantage of them. However, there is no doubt at this point that the Red Wings kind of control their own destiny. If they take advantage of these games in hand, if they continue to rack up points, they're going to be in really good shape. It's not going to be an easy task though because they do have one of the most difficult remaining schedules in the entire league. So now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the Red Wings numbers this season. As you can see, there's a lot of yellow on the screen. Basically, what I did for this is if they are in the top 10 in the NHL in whatever category we're looking at, then it'll be in green. If they're in the bottom 10, it'll be in red, and anywhere in between is yellow. The Red Wings currently rank 18th in both goals for per game and goals against per game. They don't get a ton of shots, ranking just 29th in that category. However, they are in the top half of the league in terms of shots against per game. Although the special teams are very average compared to the rest of the NHL, that is still a massive upgrade from the Red Wings special teams of last season where they had a terrible power play and literally the worst penalty kill in the league. So those are just some basic stats. Let's now take a look at some advanced numbers per moneypuck.com and I will warn you these don't look great. The Red Wings are 25th in terms of expected goals percentage, just 29th in Corsi percentage. They have a negative 15.98 expected goal differential which is 24th in the league. Their shooting percentage on shots on goal however, 7th best in the NHL. They don't get a ton of shots on goal, but when they do, they're one of the best finishing teams in the league, which really isn't something you would expect from this Red Wings team due to the lack of star power up front. And then it's back to the red with Fenwick, 27th in the league, and they're not a good face-off team either, ranking 24th in the NHL. On paper, this team is definitely very average, and remember, these stats are just looking at the Red Wings season as a whole. Obviously, if we were to take a look at the numbers just on their recent seven-game stretch, they would look a lot better, but I feel like it is very important for Red Wings fans to remember that this team still has a long way to go. Even in light of this recent hot streak, we should probably keep our expectations in check. However, definitely still have to give credit where credit is due because the Red Wings were able to hang around despite very bad underlying numbers, pretty much leading up to the All-Star break, and now they're getting hot at the right time. So now let's go ahead and take a look at who is currently leading the Red Wings in terms of offensive production. Dylan Larkin, far and away the score leader having a career year with 56 points in 55 games. Obviously, there is still that dark cloud kind of hanging over the team, which is him not having a contract extension in place just yet. But Pierre Lebrun recently did report that Steve Eisman and Larkin's agent are not talking about an extension right now because he doesn't want it to be a distraction for Larkin amidst this playoff push, which definitely makes sense. Behind Larkin is Philip Hronik, who is also having a career year with 36 points in 56 games. Dominic Kubelik, also 36 points. 16 of those being goals. He's second on the Red Wings in goals this season. And then you have David Prawn with 35 points and Lucas Raymond with 33 points. So two newcomers, two offseason additions for the Red Wings amongst their top five leading scorers. Prawn and Kubelik have definitely came as advertised. If I was going to predict the top five leading scorers on the Red Wings heading into this season, it probably wouldn't look anything like this. I would have had Larkin and Raymond in there for sure, but then probably guys like Jacob Rana, Tyler Bertuzzi. But of course, Bertuzzi missed a whole lot of time 
time this season, broke his hand twice, and Jacob Rana has only played three games up until this point, which obviously sucks, but you can also take that as a positive. The Red Wings are still in a position to fight for a playoff spot, despite Bertuzzi and Rana both having really difficult years. Moving on now from the offensive leaders, let's take a look at the Red Wings goaltending this season. Vili Husso has had a massive workload, and I feel like he's done great. 22, 13, and 5, 3 shutouts, a 2.9 goals against, a 905 save percentage, and a 1.91 goal saved above expected. Husso started the season really hot and then cooled off and I would say was below average for almost a month there, but now especially in this recent streak the Red Wings are on, Vili Husso has been a massive part of it and he's back playing at the level we saw him play at early in the season. And then Magnus Helberg has done, I would say, a fine job as the Red Wings backup. He's 4-4-1 as a whole on the season, a 2.3 goals against and a 901 save percentage and a 2.57 goal saved above expected. Obviously heading into the season, Alex Nedeljkovic and Vili Husso were expected to be kind of a 1A, 1B situation, but as we all know, Nedeljkovic has had a nightmare of a season at the NHL level. It ended up with him being waived, and now he's down in Grand Rapids trying to find his game again. But as a whole, I would say you can't be mad with the Red Wings goaltending this season. Sure, Vili Husso's numbers aren't up there amongst the best in the league in terms of goaltenders, but like I said, when he's on, he's on. His numbers just don't look the greatest because he had that really rough, like, one month, month and a half stretch in there. I do want to quickly take a look at the Red Wings upcoming games. Like I said, they have one of the most difficult remaining schedules in the league. Their next two games are at home against legit Stanley Cup contenders in the New York Rangers and the Tampa Bay Lightning. And then they're going to be going to play a back-to-back -back in Ottawa against a very desperate Senators team who are really only one hot streak away like what the Red Wings are currently on from being in a similar situation to the Red Wings. Next, I thought it would be fun to take a look at some playoff odds and these are based off of moneypuck.com and these are just the teams that are vying for those wildcard spots that I have on here. So the highest percentage is the Pittsburgh Penguins with a 56.9 and then you have the Florida Panthers with a 43.1, the Buffalo Sabres 34.3, the Islanders 28.3 and then the Red Wings at fifth of those you know teams in the wildcard race with an 18.9. The Capitals have an 11.5 and the Senators have a 9.5. So again I feel like this should put into perspective that just because the Red Wings would be in there right now by points percentage that doesn't mean all that much they have to take advantage of those games in hand and those games in hand are going to be against some really difficult opponents and this model by moneypuck.com definitely takes that into account i'm sure it also takes into account the red wings really bad underlying numbers which we looked at earlier honestly though no matter what happens from now till the end of the season as a red wings fan i can say i'm viewing this season as a success my one wish for the red wings coming into this season was just to be able to watch meaningful games later on in the year because the past few seasons especially the Red Wings have been pretty much completely out of the playoff race by December and then that just makes the rest of the season drag on so long it's just meaningless game after meaningless game so the fact that we're watching the Red Wings still playing games that have playoff implications and we're just a week away from March that's all I really asked for coming into the season so I'm happy so that is pretty much going to wrap up this video where we took a look at the Red Wings season as a whole give you guys my thoughts on their current hot streak and their playoff hopes I will say it was definitely nice to make a video about the Red Wings on ice performance and not have it be completely negative. It seems like they're really starting to turn a corner, which is definitely exciting. If you guys want to see more videos like this where we single out individual teams and really break down their season, then be sure to leave a like on this video. That's the best way to show your support and let me know what team you want to see me do next down below in the comments. And lastly, if this was your first time checking out the channel and you want more NHL content just like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and I will talk to you all soon.